<laughs> yeah. We all kind of, we got quite lucky in the sense that we've got individual things going on. Like obviously Jamal does his streaming. Um, Connor's got like a studio set up and he's like, he's working at the moment. I've got a studio set up. Um, Jason has like sort of part of been um, part of my bubble for a little bit. So he has been coming around. I don't know if we've been breaking the law. I'm not sure. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> But um, <laughs> we we have been like maybe in the last couple of months like um, started to kind of meet up and start writing again and getting some material together. Um, nothing's really come to fruition from that, but like it got around the, around about the time we were like, we just can't take this any longer. We need to continue creating. We need to do something, whatever it is, you know. So we've been doing that in a sense, but it's also given us like trying to look at the positives. It's given us time to develop ourselves in a way. So it's been a year of just looking inwards and just thinking, what can I do now that I can't do that? You know, because that was all we did. That consumed us like in, in a good way. We were averaging like 150 to 200 shows a year. And then you had rehearsals in between. I had writing and recording, like it was, it was our life basically. Mm -hmm. And then going from that, you had to kind of become a moon to the earth in some sense and just try and find your own sort of thing to do that, ha you know, does incorporate that in some way so yeah we ended up doing like a load of individual stuff um trying to do projects that don't involve gigging uh, writing and recording practicing like i say jamal's got his streaming thing going on so we've all kind of been finding things to do like why we can't do the the main venture yeah um, i mean you guys for that yeah i mean like you guys obviously have to come together at, at some point when this is all over but like you guys doing your solo projects and writing your own stuff and like like you said kind of figuring things out uh when you guys are by yourselves over the past year i feel like that's what a lot of people kind of had to do or else you know you're yeah. not going to grow at all coming out of this you know like you have yeah. a you have literally the last 12 months to really you know get your stuff together and determine like what you want to do uh, with yourself and with your career, with it, yeah. the future, you know, like, mm -hmm. so when, you know, in that sense, like you guys are, you know, everybody's kind of in a bubble or, or, over the past year, mm -hmm. to kind of figure everything out. Like when you guys look back at things, cause I'm very interested to see how you guys both started, you know, uh, like when was like the first time, like you guys picked up a guitar first time you, you decided like, this is what I want to pursue with my life. And then, you know, you look back at that now over the past 12 months and determine what t type of sound that you guys want to have moving into the future. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I, I, after you. I was uh, yeah, you carry on, <laughs> you carry on. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say now. <laughs> <laughs> With a really good story about how I started playing guitar. <laughs> I, yours has got to be more interesting. You see, uh, well, for, I think it's, it's interesting you say about the, you know, thinking about sound over the next 12 months. I, I think one of my favorite things actually, over this lockdown before, before uh, unfortunately I live with someone who's quite like pretty highly vulnerable and her mum as well is, is very vulnerable. She's actually only just had a vaccine last week. <laughs> thanks to thanks to something our manager told us. It was just like, you just need to phone them up and tell that you say, and it did work in the end. But um, so she's only just had a vaccine, uh, which is good though, because you know, means things going and moving forward. Um, but I think, you know, one of my favorite things that I did at the beginning is, and I'd never, I'd not done this an awful lot. Like Dre's predominantly records everything, you know, when we're demoing Dre, Dre's where we go. Dre knows his sound. I can't produce at all. You know, I don't really know how the software, there's no way I could work the software well enough to get something decent out of it. But I, I you know, I like to play my instrument. I like to come up with ideas. A lot of it isn't very musical or conventional in a lot of ways but Dre is a great person to take that sort of thing too and he'll turn that into something that is musical is conventional he'll produce it and I think yeah like saying at the beginning um, of lockdown I, I we went over and we I played some some things I'd had for years you know there's everyone has the as a musician they have those little riffs those little bits of um, writing that they've done that they never really think will go into anything and it was great to go and I did, we'd never done it before because when you're in a band as, that's, that was doing what we were doing, like Joe was saying, you know, 150, 200 shows, that's before practices, before rehearsals, before um, recording. 
you don't get a lot of time to go and share those things and spend time doing stuff like that. There's, but we did have a bit of time to do it, and I think we got some like really cool stuff out of it, like interesting sounds that aren't necessarily anything like what we sound like as a band playing together. Um, and it was fun to sort of explore things like that and knowing that we're capable of doing that as well, that we, we have the capacity to go, let's try something new and see how it, it comes out. Um, and like in this, for the second album, I think, you know, the tracks that we were working on, uh, what was it? Three or four of them were things that you'd written off. I think from, they were, yeah, yeah, they were slightly leaning towards the electronic side of things as well. Like we yeah. had, um, some drum loops, like on top of the actual drums. And then a lot of it was like synth bass. We started introducing like new elements, but then we also kept the you could say like sunset yellow kind of sound where it's just you know drums guitars bass vocals so it was a combination of the two really like trying to you know move over into everything that we'd been hearing and also retain like elements of the old sound mm -hmm. um and i think that's what everyone's kind of been doing at the moment so um but th there's a way to make everything an always in love song if you will yeah, um, yeah. and that's just by I don't know, getting in a room together and just playing it and seeing how close we can get to like what, what we've created on a recording, I suppose. I mean, yeah, a... that's very interesting to hear because like you guys are able to like come together, especially during this time to kind of mold and craft with what each of you are kind of bringing to the table. But at the same time, you lost that like life experience factor where you go out, you play a gig, you have these life experiences and you're inspired to write something based off of those. How, how many of your, your guys' songs on this record, you know, come from, you know, those experiences of you guys either on the road or whether it's individual experiences that you guys brought together and were able to create and write a song? It's pretty much it. Well, it's on the first album, every single song is based on an experience that we had. And, and it could also go back to like your previous question about how did we sort of begin the whole thing um like the first song we ever wrote sunset yellow that came from an unplanned event like we were never intending to start a band so to speak we just got together i just got a new computer um i got my first version of garage band and jason came around we ordered a takeaway we had a few beers um and for some reason we just started playing a couple of guitar riffs like we were trying to figure out a progression to an all-american reject song i think um see that or a bowling for soup so i can't really remember and uh, we ended up finding like a chord progression that we'd not heard so we thought let's record that in started programming some drums um and then yeah jason was like oh slap a few lyrics on this so he started just reading words off the back of a kind of iron brew um and then just ended up making like the, the first song that <laughs> We'd, we'd not planned to, to make whatsoever, but that whole thing came from just wanting to get together uh, and just spend an evening just, you know, eating rubbish food, drinking yeah. beer, watching TV. But because we all love music and we all play music and have done in various projects, that kind of formulated into, you know, a, a piece of music that we'd recorded. And we thought, this is cool. Like, we'll release this, like, unofficially. We'll just put it on SoundCloud and we'll private message it to like a hundred friends each or something and then like the next day like we, we woke up and it had like thousands and thousands of plays and we had messages on the soundcloud page like asking us to play shows like we'd not even really had a full band <laughs> together so <laughs> at, at that point we were just like we better get a band together uh, and, uh, i i remember hearing that chat and it's funny because whenever you talk about obviously i i've heard that uh, so many times before about how that came to be and it's funny when you describe it like that, you can tell, you get that vibe from the song. Like the song does feel like just hanging out. It's sort of a bit of a yeah. celebration of not yeah, having yeah. to do anything. It's sort of, a, it does feel like uh, a, a, almost a lack of responsibility. Oh, not lack of, that doesn't sound right. But you, do you know what I mean? That's like, true though. Like You don't that, have that... any responsibilities at that at that age. At that time, yeah. it's like, uh, we nothing didn't... really matters. It's just, <laughs> we can just enjoy each other's company. And... You're right, yeah. No one, we didn't have anything going on. I think we'd every, everyone had just pretty much come out of college. Um, and that was at the point in our lives, we were like, okay, it's time to either get serious or just hang out and see what happens. And I don't know, the whole thing just turned into 
a, a band which was 